What up, you royalty-addicted truth seekers? It's your face celebrity critic back here again with the scalding hot ghost that's sure to make your hair crisp off. But hold your horses, I know you're excited for more so, if you're enjoying our discussions about Harry and Meghan, please support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel and pressing the bell icon. This topic can be controversial and your support helps us share the truth. Thanks for watching. So now you'll already know I stay dishing out those explosive, no-filter predictions and opinions on the messy life of the royal nobody you just can't get enough of. Meghan Markle I told you like a month ago that OG icons Adil and Kevin Costner seemingly rejected a potential collab with Meg. Well buckle up, because it looks like King Costner is rejecting our delusional duchess all over again with some piping hot statements. Oh this tea is so deliciously shady I can barely contain my evil cackle. Grab your trendy crystal tumblers and cheap BAO wine because we're about to take a deep dive into Costner's royal spilling interview with People magazine. He was just named their number one reason to love America this year, which TPAs. The way he stays dragging Meghan is totally on brand for being America's hero. So get this y'all. Turns out way back in the day, Costner was in talks to make a sequel to his iconic 90s hit The Bodyguard. And guess who he originally wanted as his leading lady? The iconic Princess Diana herself. Costner revealed it was Sarah Fergie Ferguson, who helped get the ball rolling, saying, Sarah was the one that set this up. She was very cool, the Duchess. When she could have been like, well, I'm a princess too. What about me? She didn't. She didn't do that at all. She was going, no, I'm going to make this happen, Kev. Wow, can you even imagine the audacity if Fergie tried to weasel her way into playing Diana's role? Even back then, the ladies were keeping it classy and showing respect where it's due, unlike a certain Duchess we all know. Costner made sure to praise how Sarah gracefully stepped aside instead of trying to hijack Diana's role for herself. That level of humility is clearly a foreign concept to Meghan. But then Costner dropped an even saucier tidbit. He admitted to having a very sweet conversation with Prince William years after Diana's passing. Are you kidding me? He really is in the royal inner circle at this point. Kevra called Wills joking, you know my mom kind of fancied you when they met up randomly in England. I mean, Costner was an A-list heartthrob back in the 90s, so I can't blame Dee for crushing hard. However, here's where things get real spicy. My royalty addicted babies. Did you notice how Costner heaped praise on his relationship with Prince William, but conveniently left out any nice remarks about Prince Harry and his wife? Very strategic and shady if you ask me. This circles back to those reports that emerged last year about Meghan Thirstley trying to land a role in a potential bodyguard sequel with Costner. One source claimed at the time, the only thing Kevin loves more than an underdog like Meghan is a box office hit. On, um, could you even imagine the cringe if that became a reality? But thank goddess the rumor was swiftly shut down by royal experts who called it the biggest crock of BS on live TV. One talking head flat out declared, there's no way in hell that Kevin Costner is picking up the phone and calling Meghan Markle saying, I want to make this iconic sequel with you. She is on everybody's no hire list right now. Her brand is absolutely toxic. Damn, they really went there with the brutal honesty. This expert blatantly stated that the very notion of Meghan trying to hijack Diana's role by campaigning for the new bodyguard movie offends me beyond all comprehension. I'm sorry, but I have to agree. Just like Costner respected Fergie not trying to overstep and usurp Diana's intended role back then, it seems pretty clear he'd have that same principled stance about keeping Meghan as far away as possible from this project out of reverence for Diana's memory and legacy. The way he only lavished praise on Prince William, yet stayed tight-lipped about Harry and his wife? That silence is louder than a dog whistle, if you ask me. His glowing words about Wills give the energy of, this is the royal I respect and have a great report with. Whereas his comments about Meghan were, well, non-existent. It screams, I want absolutely no part of that messy situation in the most diplomatic way possible. An iconic queen like Diana deserves to have her memory protected from someone as grotesquely unclassy and entitled as Meghan. At this point, it's very obvious to me that Meghan has burned way too many bridges in her couch-chasing desperation within the Hollywood elite. She's so tragically thirsty for fame and credibility that she actually thought she could weasel her way into essentially remaking one of the most beloved movies of all time and sliding into Princess Diana's role. The audacity is astounding even for her. But celebs like Costner can see right through Meghan's transparent attempts to latch onto any shred of relevance by exploiting Diana's name and legacy. He's had a personal rapport with the real royals for decades at this point. He witnessed disgrace and humility firsthand. 
No way would he let a tacky D-lister like Megan anywhere near a project so deeply connected to the People's Princess. Megan has officially become a punching bag for A-listers to mock at this point in her career implosion. She continues chasing these big roles and deals, fairly getting rejected left and right behind the scenes, while heavy hitters like Costner cozy up to the real royals out of respect for his decades-long personal connections to them. It's a level of iconic status Megan is never going to achieve no matter how desperately delusional she gets. At her current lame rate, the only iconic sequel role fitting for the off-brand Duchess would be a cringy, straight to vase mockbuster version where she plays herself. She can keep doing those lothable Hollywood impressions and bad auto-harp covers out in her Montecito chicken coop all she wants. But the big leagues clearly won no part of her played-out shtick or her cancelled reputation. This saga with Costner is just the latest delicious slice of humble pie that the out-of-touch, try-hard duchess is being force-fed by the very exclusive clubs and big-name stars she so desperately covets access to. She's the perpetual Hollywood outcast these days, sitting alone at the lame kids' table while the elite cool kids turn her away at every velvet rope and opportunity. A true modern Greek tragedy, if you ask me. So there you have it. My heart take that this new Costner revelation is just further receipt of Megan's increasing irrelevancy and the endless string of public rejections she keeps facing as a consequence of her own horrible judgment and grotesque sense of entitlement. The more she flails around trying to be somebody she's simply not cut out for, the more the real somebodies of the industry mock and exclude her from behind the scenes. She fooled herself into believing she could elevate herself to Princess Diana's level of star power and grace, but experienced icons like Costner see right through her desperate delusion. They clearly won't validate her cringe-worthy attempts to tarnish Diana's legacy by thirstily attaching herself to projects and roles that she has zero right to be involved in. At all. Her path to Hollywood redemption keeps getting more blocked by these endless string of ulls and embarrassing rejections at every turn. What a sad, pathetic, chaotic mess she's turning into. I really thought the former C-list cable actress had more self-awareness than this. But I guess I overestimated her last two remaining brain cells. I just know this epic truth bomb of a take is gonna have the ravenous Sussex squad frothing at the mouth and typing scathing comments in their mom's basements about what an awful person I am. Cry harder, stands. Your salty tears of defensive outrage just add more explosive bubbles to my delicious tea. I'll be over here joyfully sipping away without a care in the world. Let me know if you agree with my scalding hot take down in the comments. You know I always love stirring the pot. I'll just be kicking it over here perfecting my tangerine spray tan and shopping for some more ridiculously gaudy, bank-breaking diamonds to wear. Because why not? I'm making that total rags-to-riches scammer-to-riches story out happen unapologetically. So, this is it from my side. So, what do you think about this news, guys? If you want more content like this, don't worry, I'll be back soon with more scalding hot tea. But before closing in, you know the drill, like, subscribe, and share this video to spread the word. Until next time, folks, bye for now.